Um, yes, yeah, so Git, Git for humans. Um, so, hi, uh, I'm Alice. I'm a senior developer at the Financial Times. Um, so I work at the Financial Times now. Um, I used to work at GDS in the design team there. Yeah, woo! <laughs> uh, and I was a senior developer in the design team there. And then before that, I worked at Berg, uh, which is a sort of product invention company that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and the reason I'm telling you that is just because um, I think that throughout my um, career so far, I've always felt like working with things are just better when you work with designers as a developer. That's, that's what I believe in. The things that I want to build and the things that, that, that come out uh, are just like so much more interesting and fun when you've got uh, a, develop, a designer um, there with you to help. And I, I just sort of, so I'm here to talk to you and most of you are probably designers, but I'm also not here to lecture you on um, ways you should be more like me um, because I really think that the differences between design and development are very um, like brilliant and should be celebrated. Anyway, uh, so I was having this conversation with Danny about what I could talk about today, and um, we got to this thing about what tools could you not live without that designers don't have, and there is one that's very central to everything that I do, um, and that is Git. Um, so I wanted to talk about Git, um, and so that's what this is. So we'll cover some stuff like what is Git, um, and also uh, why it's good, but I don't think that um, you're going to, it's possible to explain, like you're not going to go away knowing how to use Git properly, that's much better done through workshops. Um, this is Tom Stewart, he runs Git workshops, uh, and he is my friend, but he, uh, when I said oh, I'm going to talk to uh, some designers about Git, he said, oh, I've run a workshop about, design, uh, about Git for designers, here are my slides, um, and that was very useful, so thank you Tom for that. Um, so to kick us off about what Git is, Git is an application that runs on your computer like a web browser or word processor. Um, I think that's like such a plain language explanation of what Git is, um, but I think it's kind of hard to find that level of just like basicness. Um, but that's all it is. It's just some code, some software, an application that runs on your computer. Um, so next important question is obviously what does it do? Um, so broadly, Git helps you manage work done on projects. Um, and then the next thing to say is that Git is really unfriendly. Um, and I think this is why designers, certainly the designers that I've worked with, have this sort of fear of it. Um, and it's because uh, it's just not very approachable as a tool. Um, the, one of the reasons it's not very approachable is like this is the primary interface for it. So there's no, you know, good software and discoverable software has like a UI that you can click and poke at things and you learn things from it. This Git, you just have to know what you want to do and then type it into the terminal, which is not a friendly place. Um, and then the uh, other thing, I mean, of course, there are applications you can download that are sort of a layer on top, a UI on top of Git, um, which is a bit more helpful, but none of them are particularly, I don't think I would know, be able to tell through Googling which like the main one of those is, or which, if I was getting a, the good one or the bad, they're just sort of, they're, and they also still are not brilliantly usable, I don't think. The other problem with Git is that it's full of jargon. So you have this terminal that you have to type things into, but you don't know what to type into. So you go and look some stuff up, but then everything is just using all these weird words and it's jargon explained by more jargon. Uh, and that's very difficult as well and very unfriendly to beginners. Um, this is Linus Torvalds. He is the creator of Git, uh, and he has also created the uh, operating system Linux. Uh, he's very clever. Um, but has a sort of reputation for being a bit of an asshole, uh, <laughs> uh, particularly to people who are, um, he's like prone to shaming people on mailing lists, um, particularly people who ask questions that he thinks they haven't done kind of sufficient research before asking the question. Um, and so the fact that Git is really unfriendly, I think is probably um, not a massive coincidence because I don't think he's very friendly. Um, he also, if you're wondering about the name Git, he actually named it after himself and has quipped that he is a Git and that is why he called that Git. He also named Linux after himself, Linus Linux. Anyway, so I think it's probably not too much of a stretch to say that Git is a bit unfriendly because uh, its creator is also unfriendly. Um, underneath all of this though, Git's actually quite simple um, and it's incredibly useful and powerful. So, why am I here as a, as a developer trying to tell you about Git? Well, I have sort of two objectives for today. The first is that you would come away knowing a bit about what Git is, and, and that's, I think, feel confident in being able to do that. But the second one is that um, you go away thinking that 
it would be possible for you to make some changes using Git. Because I work with a lot of um, designers and who know enough uh, about HTML and CSS that they could make changes to code if they wanted to, and it would be really useful for me if they did that, and I'd really love that. Um, but this hurdle is really that Git is just very intimidating for them, um, and so I'd quite, like to, I'd quite like you to feel like it was possible that you could change things in Git if you wanted. Because I think being able to make small updates to projects is just really empowering as well. So the format of this talk is going to be five things that Git helps you do, and then we'll look at some commands that are sort of jargon bust um, some Git commands as well. So the first thing that Git does is it lets you tell the story of your project. So you use Git to take snapshots of files in a folder, and this folder is called a repository or repo. So that's really just any folder on your computer can be a repository, and everything in it you therefore probably care about with Git. And it could be like a folder of code, or it could be a folder of just JPEGs, or you know, just any folder. And that is your that is in Gitland that is called a repository, or sometimes abbreviated to repo. And when you want to take a snapshot of a file or files, you create a commit. Um, so you can create a commit, but you also commit to your changes. Um, and so, I mean, you probably do something similar like this in terms of like, I've seen this definitely, where you sort of have these progressively more um, detailed names for files as you get through feedback and do those kind of things. Um, and Git, the first part of Git where you're saving and saving a history is, uh, is just a sort of more sophisticated way of doing this. So you kind of keep making these commits and go down. Um, and what's happened here is the file is always the same. You're not renaming the file each time. You're just committing different versions of it, and you have this kind of linear history. Um, when you commit a file or files, some information is also automatically saved along with that commit. Who made the commit, and uh, when did they make it, like a, a timestamp. Um, you can also add more information about the changes you've made via a commit message. Uh, so a good commit message will say why you made a change to something. It's not very useful to say what the change is, because if you wanted to know what the change was, you could just look at the differences between the two, the first commit and then the subsequent one. But why you made that change is really important, because certainly if you're going back to a change that was made in a file a year ago, even if it's just you, it was you that made that change, it's very common that you forgot why you did that. So the why part is really good, and the commit message is very useful for sort of capturing that. So with a commit, we've already got like way more expressive power uh, than just this line of like file name. Um, we can just detail the changes we made to our project as we go through it. Um, and it means that I can look back over my project history or someone else can look back and understand what I was doing and why um, at that time. Um, this is kind of, I'm told this is a little bit like the history palette in Photoshop, but I don't know what that means. So, um, <laughs> but hopefully you're like, oh yes, it is. Um, anyway, so those are two pieces of jargon that we've just done. Repository, just a folder. It's just a folder of stuff you're interested in. Commit is saving a snapshot of that whole folder maybe, or some files in that folder, um, and that's what those two things are. So once you've got this history, you can now time travel through it using Git, which is really cool. Um, so you can move through time, uh, and, I, and so we said you've got this sort of history of your project, um, and this is another like really unfriendly, boring thing, but so each of these commits has what's called a hash, which is just a computer ID, basically. It's a very unfriendly, long list of characters. Um, and if you want to go back in time, say here I deleted a play icon from my repository, and now I'm like, that play icon was actually pretty dope, and I'd like to see it again. So I can check out that commit and have a look. Actually, it would be the commit before the one where I deleted it, of course. But um, So I can check that out. Uh, you, by passing in that commit hash. So the act of like traveling back in time is called checking out, and you pass this computer fingerprint ID thing called a hash to Git to do that. Um, so now I'm back here, um, and when I go into my repository on my computer, it looks like everything I did since then never happened. It's not that I've undone any of those changes, they just don't appear anymore, and I can see exactly what I was looking at back in May, when I, just after I deleted that icon. Um, 
Some other commits do still exist, but I think this can be quite scary to people because it looks like they maybe have lost their commits, because their changes, because they can no longer see them. But they're still there, and it's fine, and I can just check out a later stage to get those things back. So there's some more terms. Hash, just an ID generated by a computer. Um, and checkout is where you take out, like, go back in time and look at those changes as they were when you made that commit. Thing number three is that Git helps you experiment. Um, so, so far, everything's been very linear. Everything's just one thing after another. But that's not really um, how work actually is. Um, sometimes you want to make easily discardable experiments. Uh, the way you do this in Git is with branches. So a branch is a, a movable label that points to a commit. Um, this is one of the things I find confusing about Git, because branch is such a, like, um, like you just, it, such an evocative term uh, that you think branching means, and it's very similar. There's, it looks like a branch might be a whole list of commits, but actually a branch is actually only a label pointing to a single commit. So in uh, Git, the default branch is master, um, but you can add your own branches as well. So here is I've added a new branch called add new styles. I haven't made any commits on that branch. It's just there is now a branch called add new styles, and it's exactly the same as master. But I can l move between the check out those two between those two branches, but they, there's no differences because I haven't done anything yet. Um, so a developer will often do lots of work on a branch. So now master's stayed there, but I've added, I've done some new commits. Uh, and my branch is pointing at the end of those new commits uh, where I'm adding some mysterious new styles. So in this way, you can do kind of lots of stuff. So at work, say if I've got this business as usual type work, which is adding new styles to whatever it is on my project, but I also am trying to do some wild experiments at the same time, but I have only like a day a week to do that. This way, I can have these two sort of parallel things happening. So all the code on the blue line there looks like one thing, but I can check out my pink line when I want to do my sort of wild experiments, um, and then it's like a completely different, you know, I get all of those changes instead. And this is really useful because I can just get rid of that pink branch if I decide not to keep it. If I, you know, I can do very reckless things on that, on that branch, um, and it's fine. It's very easy and safe to do those changes and then delete them if I decide I'm not interested in them. Um, at the FT, most dev work is done on branches, and the master branch is considered special. Uh, so it's common for the master branch to be the version of the code or files that live on, that are live on the site, um, and often if you commit to the master branch, it automatically gets deployed onto the site, which, again, can be quite scary for, uh, even develop developers find that quite scary, but, um, but certainly uh, people who are not familiar with Git can find that a little alarming. Whereas your other branches can contain work in progress, weird hacks, things you're not ready for your colleagues to see yet or learn about, um, but at some point, your work that you've done in a branch, you're going to want to get it back into the master branch if you're happy with it and you want it to be deployed. So this is the point where you do what's called a merge. So here is a merge commit. Um, and that at this point in time, my folders, all my files in my repo that I am interested in, my, all my folder looks like all of the code, that, all of the commits that happened in the previous thing and also in the branch. It's a combination of those two sets of commits, basically. And then that pink branch is still just sort of hanging out up there, and we haven't merged that because that's an experiment, um, and it's got some very bad code in it, probably. Um, so that's the next thing. So branches uh, is just a movable label that points to a commit, and a merge is a combination of two or more branches. Um, the next thing that Git is really good at is it helps you back up your work. Um, so everybody here knows that you should back up your work regularly. Everybody here is not backing up their work regularly enough. I'm almost certain of that. Um, ideally, you want to back it up somewhere that's geographically distinct from where your laptop mostly is in case there's like a fire or you get burgled or something. Um, and so certainly the designers that I work with just wang all their files in Dropbox, um, and that's a good way of backing things up. Um, there are other benefits to backing stuff up in Dropbox, at least, or, or Google Drive. Um, 
It means that you can access it from anywhere, so I can work from home and see those files. Uh, and it also means that there's shared access, so other people can see my files and we can work on the same stuff at the same time. So Git has this concept, and in, in Git land, this is called a remote. Um, but a remote is just a computer, another computer where a repo lives. Um, so a very popular remote is GitHub. Um, and so one of the things that I see a lot of confusion around is what is Git and what is GitHub. Well, Git is, is this thing invented by Linus Torvalds that works on your computer. Uh, GitHub is a website that has Git running in it but it also has loads of other sort of social features. Um, you've got like commit graphs and lots of kind of uh, other ways to help people collaborate um, that Git doesn't have natively. Um, but there are other things like GitHub, like Bitbucket, or that maybe that got changed to Stash. Um, so lots of other sites, they're just sort of all quite a lot less popular than GitHub. Um, and GitHub is what we use at the FT a lot. Um, so to get some work from your remote for the first time, you have to clone it. Uh, so here's our remote. There's GitHub's logo, that cat thing. Um, and so say if uh, FT columnist Martin Wolf wanted to get uh, the commits from a remote onto his computer, uh, he can clone them. And then uh, if FT columnist and national treasure Lucy Kellaway also wanted that code on her computer, she would also clone it as well. So now everybody, there are three places where this code this repository exists. Um, so now Lucy, who is like, as well as being like a really good columnist and very funny, acerbic, witted person, she's also really good at finding bugs in software. Um, and she's found a bug, and she wants to um, fix that, and it's icon tinting. Some of our icons on ft.com are showing up in the wrong color because of some case sensitivity to the hex code, this is a relevant detail. Um, anyway, so she is, she's fixed it, so that's really great. Um, and now she needs to get that code back to the remote. Um, so here's her little commit there, uh, and she wants to send it back. So to do that, she does a push. Um, so when you want to get your commits to a remote location, you push them. Um, but now Martin is behind, he's not able to see that bug fix that Lucy has done, and so he wants to get those changes, so he is going to pull them from the remote. This diagram can maybe have done with some arrows, but it's too late now, obviously. Uh, so anyway, so we learned some more stuff there. Uh, a remote, that's just a computer with a repository on it, um, or many repositories, maybe. Uh, a clone is where you get a repository for the first time. Uh, pull and push are where you, coming from you, you push your changes or you pull them. The final thing that is really great about Git is um, that it helps you collaborate. So we saw with Martin and Lucy there, they were working together. Um, or rather, Lucy was doing the work and Martin was um, benefiting from it. Um, but the, the aggregate effect of all of these things that we've already talked about is that it just really enables people to collaborate on big projects together. So um, committing helps you tell other people why the story of your project, why you made changes, uh, why you did things the way that you did. Um, remotes mean that other people can access your project. Um, merges help manage combining your work with someone else's in a safe way so that you don't overwrite their changes by accident, although that can still happen sometimes if you're careless. But, um, or if, you're not, if, if you haven't made changes to the same file, then you just automatically get their work, which is pretty good. Um, and so Git allows lots of people to work on the same project at the same time, um, which is why they suffer through the really terrible uh, UX of it. Um, so, if this is just all the terms we've covered, but if you were looking at these slides um, later, that might be a useful slide to have. Um, so, to recap, Git helps you tell the story of your project, travel back in time through that story, and find things that you needed. You never have to worry about deleting anything with Git because you don't ever fully delete it, it's always in your history. Um, you can experiment with changes. Uh, you can back up your work, and you can collaborate on projects with other people. Uh, that is the end of my talk. Thank you.